All right, YouTube land. Um, so there was a question posed up on one of the forums on ye old Facebooks, okay? Discussing uh, the merits and individual flaws of weld through primer. So as I take a smoke break, I'm gonna explain this to you. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna get uh, the camera put up on a tripod so I can sit down and, and talk to you and I can show you kind of what I got going on, the weld through primer I choose to use uh, through basically good fortune of good vendors. So let me get it set up on a stand and we're gonna go through some weld through primer. I'll explain to you what I use, how I use it, and why. All right, there are good and gentle folks. Gather around. This is what I got to show you, what I got to explain to you today. Let me adjust this to scotch so you can see my ugly mug. All right, so you've been here, Smith & Welding Restoration. You kind of know what I got going on, how the operation's laid out. I'm crus, uh, I'm crass, coarse, and mostly unrefined. So uh, all that said, I don't generally advertise specific products. They don't give me any fucking money. Uh, Pete's the same way. Most guys are like this. that have any, um, I don't know, any amount of instructional videos. I don't know if you can call what I do instructional, but I'll give you my experiences and the how and why I end up where I'm at. All right, so on Facebook, we were discussing on a forum, well through primer and the virtues and vices therein. What I got today for you is two pieces of steel, one I knocked holes in, so we're gonna do a lap. So we can do both plug welds. Ah, let's get this right here. So we can do both plug welds and a fillet weld. Hmm, pardon me, and a fillet weld. It's 22 gauge sheet metal, scrap side laying around off of a job. Um, most weld through primers, especially your zinc weld through primers, I experience a lot of spatter um, even worse, um, failure to create a molten pool to join two pieces together via plug welding, okay? The stuff that came across my table a couple months ago, I've been using ever since, since the uh, 1970 Firebird that I worked on for the gentleman. I got this weld through primer through my vendor and I really like this stuff. I asked if anybody had dealt with it before. All right, so this is what it is. <clears throat> it's Weld Through Primer by Impact Performance, and it's copper. All right, so I got this through Sturdivant's Body Shop Supply Store. Uh, I'm gonna say this can cost like $20, okay? 15, 20 bucks is, is you're running an average on product like that. Uh, like I said, it's through Impact. I have no idea who the hell they are. Um, I don't think I've ever used any of their materials before. So, one argument on there was just use a brush and brush it on inside the cavity. If you're gonna plug weld, use a small drill bit and, and get rid of that weld through primer that's behind your plug. The idea behind weld through primer, as I understand it, as I've come to learn, is specifically this. It actually goes on the inside of both your surfaces that you will never see again, put together and you weld it. What it does, it causes it to flow out and it will recongeal and form and give you some corrosion protection. So not having it where you're welding um, is not gonna be the best use of your resources as per my understanding. Hey, comments below, tell me I'm full of shit. That's cool. That's where my opinion stands, that's where my education stands thus far. If I have to retract it later, I certainly will. So, without further, we're gonna go ahead and shoot one side on each of these. I want full coverage. In fact, I overkill a little bit. Using well-ventilated area, you can see I got good full coverage on that one. I got good full coverage on that one. We're gonna let this sit a second. It needs about 10 minutes to flash out. Ugh. So you need about 10 minutes to flash out properly so that we can weld to it. Otherwise you just have a fireball on your hands. 
All right, now with some movie magic, it's nice and dry as you can see. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take, we're gonna lap these about that far, which is way further than I ever lap anything uh, in a car. We're gonna take some spot weld clamps. If I can do this correctly, the whole idea is to clamp this steel together so you don't have any big air gaps. Air gaps are bad. Air gaps cause you more grief than inclusions. Believe that. Uh, clamped up, it's nice and tight. So, propping that up here like this I'm with a block behind it, stabilize it. Let's go over some safety gear, okay? I got gloves. These are not ideal for welding and doing lots of welding. I'm wearing long sleeves. I got boots. They go all the way up in lace. Leather. Leather uppers. I got denim jeans, which is mostly cotton. These are things that are important. Now, unless you like sparks zapping the top of your nugget, get a hat, turn around backwards. Get a head wrap, get something. You old trusty welding helmet. Make sure it's fitted appropriately. Okay, and most important, coffee. It's styrofoam cup, so we're gonna sit over there, shall we? Now I'm using a little Miller 140. That's what I weld all my sheet metal with, okay? Uh, 030 wire. I set it up. Um, it's like set at 6 and 60, I think. 6 on uh, amperage and, or voltage and 60 on wire feed. Which is technically greater than what 22 gauge calls for. You should be able to weld 18 gauge with those settings. I like it a little hot. I use a tri gas mix. And that gives me what I want. All right, we got arc. We should be in control of our destinies now. When you got the welder out, when you're fixing the weld, this is your diffuser nozzle, right here. Okay. This is to direct the gas, the shielding gas where it needs to go. If you're using flux core, you can get rid of the fucker. It doesn't really matter, but. If you're doing auto body work, do not use flux core. It will come back through, it will haunt you later. That's on how it belongs. I've got a slight recess with my tip. You only want to run about 3 8 to 5 8 stick out. You run more than that, or less than that, you run into issues. More than that, what happens is shielding gas isn't doing its job. Less than that, you end up fusing your diffuser nozzle to what you're welding or you run over yourself, it, it creates issues, okay? Now I'm kind of doing a welding demo along with the weld through primer uh, product uh, review, I reckon. Um, when you're doing a plug weld, you aim that son of a bitch 90 degrees straight in the center of that hole and do a little arc and a little arc underneath. Get the center good, go above, go below, it's a rosette, done. Almost looks like a rivet in place. Now, let's see if I can get this to flow smoothly like it should ought to. That's a little bit exaggerated, but you see the rosette, nice and tight. Now, with the zinc weld through primer I had been using, I bust these loose and I got an issue. And I also got good penetration on the backside. That's important. Now, the other primer I had used in the past, those wouldn't have worked out so well. You didn't see a lot of splatter. There wasn't, I mean, you can see right there, there's not a lot of spatter on it. 
Not a lot of debris left over from welding. You set it a little hot. And it allows that, see how immune to heat that weld through primer is? Now let's, uh, I'm going to zap these other plug welds. Just keep everything together. And then I'm going to flip it over on a couple of blocks of metal to get up off the table. Because the table acts as a heat sink affecting your weld negatively in a poor fashion. Clamp this together, we'll get these other three spot welds done. And then we will look at spot welding, stitch welding, and see how it works out with stitch welding right on that weld through primer. Now I can get these two off the same set of pliers. Minor side note, don't weld your pliers to your metal. I got plenty hot. All right, we're gonna flip it over. I'm gonna lay it up on these blocks. We're going to do a couple stitches, okay? Now sometimes it spits and sputters for just a second as it's engaging. But you can see I've got some real nice stitches. Now when I'm doing a stitch weld, You'll notice, I actually pull on a stitch weld rather than push. Nuances. Set it straight on, you get about 10 degrees on a lead or pull angle. And I'm gonna go 45 degrees and put that wire right in the middle of that little tiny joint. That's a good fillet weld, that's textbook teaching there. We'll do a couple more of these and we're gonna look at the product overall. Alright, so that's all the welding we're going to do. Let's take a look at the piece after I let it cool for a second. Something like that, if it is in a complex, in the middle of a complex uh, press panel, you can, you can spot weld about that far before you got to worry about warping. If it's on a nice, long, flat, extended area that many spot welds together all at once like I just did that will warp your panel to the point of uh, almost unusable um, you have to do a lot of hammer and dolly work to stretch that metal back out now it's never a bad idea to go along your weld seam and hammer and dolly that out because it'll stretch that where that where that weld is it shrinks that metal up because you got nice and hot and it'll shrink, it'll, it'll take that shrunken metal, stretch it back out. Hammer it too much, you pull the weld right out of the steel. Because it's harder, more brittle there. We're not going to get into all those particulars today. But look at the piece. It's pretty clean. I don't have a lot of splatter. Um, it's not too much to clean up. And that is 22 gauge sheet metal with 030 wire. If I can do it, folks, so can you. Get out there in your garage and experiment. See how I got it a little bit hot? How that's raised, those bumps are raised up? It's a little too hot. You're distorting the back piece of steel on your fillet weld. And you can see that I've warped it just a little bit. Warping 22 gauge, warping sheet metal on auto body is very, very easy. Uh, generally you go a few inches apart and then you go in between those and in between those until you close the gap with stitches. So, 
there you go. It's uh, Impact Brand. Let me get this around here correctly. Weld through primer, copper. I have created on some service vans I did quick patchwork on. I have created an electrical connection over paint. I painted that, that copper coat over paint in an area I couldn't get to other than with a die grinder and I wasn't taking the time to do it that day. Uh, the job didn't warrant it. It just needed to be welded up real quick, spotted in, fiberglass, body work it out. Uh, I hope that answers questions on weld through primer. Again, this is how I use it, what I utilize it for, and what I've learned from both using the product and study. Uh, with the YouTube land, Facebook land, fact sheets, harassing vendors, there you go. You don't want to not have it on your weld. You want it all over the interior of your panel because that is your only corrosion protection. If you want it to rust out again in a year, why bother using primer at all? So I'm out of here. You folks have a good day. Again, we're doing some product review. Hope you liked it. Wow, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for checking in. Come back on the next one. See what the hell we're gonna do next time. Subscribe, comment. Find us on the old, over on the old Facebook, uh, Smith Welding Restoration LLC on Facebook. Uh, numbers at the beginning. Have any questions? Call.